uh, this tutorial video focuses on the use of coding to create the email validator. So the challenge is to make a program to check whether an email address is valid or not. For instance, you could make sure that there are no spaces, there is an at symbol and a dot somewhere after it. Also check the length of the parts at the start and at the end parts of the address are not blank. And then we've got an extension task to cover after. Now the first thing we're going to want to look at is we're going to want to look at okay so the first thing we're going to want to look at is some useful bits of coding so the first part of the coding you want to look at is how to search a string to see if it contains some information so this is how you search a string to find out for example if it has a h so my variable for the hello world is welcome so if h is in this string here then it's going to print this and then you've also got if it does not contain something so for example if the exclamation mark is not in welcome then it will come up saying there is no exclamation mark so if we run that you can see that it comes up saying that h is in the welcome message which it is and there is no exclamation mark okay so there is no exclamation mark so by doing that we can create a code that allows us to check certain information to see if it contains certain values. So I'm just going to do an introduction. So let's call this the email like the email validator, like so. And then the first thing I'm going to have is email because this is what the user is going to input. So input what is your email? Let's say what is your email address, like so. That's space there, close the bracket. So the user is going to put in their email. Now I'm going to now do an if statement for if email, uh, no, if the at in email, then print valid. Okay, so if it finds that the at symbol is in email, it will print valid. So let's run this. Just save that quickly. Let's call it email test. And then we can run it. So if we put just an at symbol at the moment, it comes up saying valid. If we don't put an at symbol, so if we put something else, it doesn't do anything. Okay, so that's part one of what we want. If they don't include that, we want an else, okay? Because basically what we want to do is we want to create a code that will tell the user exactly what is wrong with their email address so that they can fix it. So if it doesn't contain an at symbol, then we want to put your email address must contain, and then we'll do at. Okay, like so. Now notice that you can use double speech marks and then you can use the single speech marks within that without ending the string. Okay, So your email address must contain the at symbol. So if we do this, put something like that. So it comes up saying your email must contain that. So it shows that there's an error. We can now do if, let's say if there is a space in email because email addresses don't have spaces so we need to make sure that it's not going to allow people to put empty spaces in their email so uh, email contains an empty space this is invalid and then this one we're going to have else because if it doesn't contain a space we could have email contains no spaces so so now if we do an at and a space it's valid because it's got the at symbol but the email contains an empty space okay so it contains an empty space which means this is invalid now the other thing we want is we want it to be able to check to see if it has dot com and things like that at the end of it so if 
let's say dot com. So we'll do dot and com like that in email. Now instead of writing this so that we had you know loads and loads of if statements that have dot com, dot org, dot co uk, etc. You can do it all in one by having an or. So you can do or and then we do for example dot co uk in email or dot org in email. So let's say if it has any of those. So those are all kind of examples of valid uh, email endings. We could have, you know, you might have to have Gmail somewhere in there or Outlook or anything like that. But at the moment, we'll just have it for these things. And then we'll print, let's say ending is valid. Okay. And if we do else, we can say the ending is not valid. is not valid like so okay so let's try this one so let's say it's john at hotmail.co.uk for example it contains not spaces let's say no spaces there so that bit's valid email contains no spaces and the ending is valid so it's basically saying that our email is valid and it's going to accept it as a valid email. Now you'll notice that lots of online uh, accounts where you sign up, they basically send you an email to prove that your email address is valid. A lot of the time they've got a couple of basic things like this to check to see if your email is valid or not, but they very rarely check every single part because there are so many different variations of emails because there are some people that have at and then their company name so it's difficult to actually see what the ending would be you just need to make sure that they've got some of the key things that every email address contains so they all must contain an at symbol they have to they should never have spaces in them because email addresses aren't valid with spaces and they should have an ending that is appropriate so we have to make sure that the ending is appropriate so that's a nice simple way of doing like an email validator you can make it a little bit more complex by checking if anything before the at symbol for example is empty and I can show you that with my example validator so if I open up this one here now I've basically got a series of code here that what it does is it checks to see if the at symbol is in the email if it is it will say yep it contains the at symbol it then finds position one is equal to email dot find and then the at symbol so it looks through the email address to find the at symbol and then the end position is the length of the email so what it does is it checks to see if the list, are, sorry, the items in the email are long enough basically. So if position one is bigger or equal to the end position, then it will say that the end of the list is empty. So anything after the at symbol in an email address, it checks for. And also it checks if position one Okay, so if position one, so it finds that position, if that number is greater than five, then it means that the email is too short at the start. So it needs it needs to be bigger than that number there. So if, for example, this one, it needs to be bigger, basically. So it means that you can check to make sure that an email is long enough and not too short. And then we've still got our bits here where I've checked for .com, .co.uk, .edu, etc. So it means that it works very similar to this one here that we've created. So it works in a very similar way. So I'm hoping that's helpful in showing you what you can do with the email validator. You could create a loop with this so that it loops round 
if they put an invalid email address in. And then in the next video, we're going to have a look at how to create an email validator that takes the emails from a document and then checks if they are valid all at the same time. So it's a very quick way to check lots of emails at the same time.